Hi, welcome to Get Into Woodworking with me, Mitch Peacock. Last time I talked a little bit about saws and about uh, measuring and using a marking knife or a pencil. This time I'm just going to cover a couple more tools, then we'll head off to the garage to try and turn a couple of pallets into a decent work area. The next tool I want to introduce you to are chisels. For the time being I'm just going to tell you about a bevel edge chisels, which is what these are. They are first of all flat on one side, they have a bevel at one end which is the sharp pointy end and they're also beveled slightly on the sides although not down to a sharp edge. They're relatively thin in their cross section and the width will vary depending on what work you want to do with them. This set of three budget chisels costs less than five pounds. If you look in a tool catalogue you will find individual chisels the same dimensions as these that are selling for 30 or 40 pounds each. They have their advantages. The back of the chisel, which I say is flat, will be probably flatter than these budget ones. Not necessarily, but probably will be. The bevel will be a lot smoother and the sharp cutting edge a lot straighter and smoother than these budget chisels. So the cuts you make with them will be a little bit crisper straight out of the packet. Probably the handles will be made from hardwood and will be lovely to feel in the hands as opposed to these cheaper plastic ones and the steel that's used will probably keep a sharp edge a little bit longer than these. I'll show in a later video how we can prepare a much smoother sharp edge on these chisels which will produce a crisper finish but I must say that straight out of the packet they were definitely sharp and you could definitely get into woodworking with them straight away. Now these chisels have a striking head on them which continues right the way through to the metal of the blade. So you can strike them with a hammer or a mallet and you won't damage the handles. I like to use a smallish hammer for striking my chisels. I feel I have a little more control with a, a small metal hammer than I do with a larger mallet. I think it's also quite important to have a drill to start out with. I don't often use screws in my projects but where I do uh, it's essential to drill a clearance hole for the screw to go through if you want to tighten two pieces together. So a little twist drill and some bits most useful. But you also find that mains powered drills are very cheap so just picking up one of those would be useful too. I'll just show you one more tool today and that's the marking gauge. This is basically a, a rod of wood with a movable fence on it which clamps with a little screw in the side and it has a sharp point coming through which is held either with a wedge or a screw or it may just be fixed in there. So a sharp point which is used to score the wood with a mark and we move the fence to a distance away from that sharp point, fix it and then we can mark that distance on a piece of wood Place the stock or fence of the marking gauge against the side of the, the work and then lower the point onto the work and draw it back towards yourself and you score a line. We can set the distance of the, the point or in this case I've got a knife in this one. We can set the distance away from the fence or stock using a ruler and locking it off with the lock screw.
Welcome to the garage where you can see I've been on the scavenge and I've got myself a standard size pallet, a length of 2x6 and a few short lengths of 2x4. And I'm going to turn this pallet into a slim bench that you can store in the garage alongside your car. I'm going to be using the 2x6 for the bench top and I'm going to be using the 2x6 for the bench top and if I place it on the second slat down I'll get a bench top height of approximately 33-34 inches which is hip height for me and that will be an adequate size for most operations. So the first task is to cut off this pallet at the level of the second slat. Hopefully by this point you will have either a universal saw or a crosscut saw that you can use to do this. Now with the top on you can see the height we're sort of talking about and I think that will be fine. It will work well for planing and it will work well for sawing. To be able to clamp things to the worktop, we really need a flat surface underneath here. At the moment it's just a hole. So I'm going to use these small blocking pieces of 2x4 just to fill up that area and bring it flush with the bottom of these two slats. I still need some more blocking so I'm going to take these two slats off the piece that we cut off the pallet and uh, tear out the blocking that's holding them together. I do that, I've got a hardwood block here that fills most of the gap up and I've got two hardwood wedges. I can drop one in there, pop the other one in. As I drive the second one in the wedges will expand and hopefully push those boards off the bearer. And you can see it's come far enough apart to get my hammer claw under there. I can use that now to block up the rest of the gaps. Now, there's always a chance when we're doing some hard work on the bench that uh, the forces will rack this whole substructure and if I put a lot of force on it I can see it does rack a little bit so the two slats that I took off from the one end I can use as diagonal braces on the sides and that should stiffen it up quite a bit using a gap filling adhesive on these joints would be a, a very good idea With the bracing in place, the whole thing's a lot more rigid. If you've got any sheets of plywood, they would be excellent for bracing. Whatever size they are, just pin them to these slats and that would help brace it even more. Now I've dug out my beginner's vise, which is very basic and it just clamps to the underside of a workbench. And I'm going to leave enough room on either end of this bench to be able to clamp that on. With a bit of ingenuity, we can design a jaw to screw onto that vise, which will act as an end vise for the rest of the bench. To fit the bench top, I'm going to use some 4 inch nails, and I'm going to make sure that the heads are sunk well below the surface so I don't catch them with any tools. To sink the nail heads below the surface of the workbench, I'm going to use a brad point bit in the hand drill to drill down about 3 sixteenths of an inch. The nail head's a nice tight fit in that hole and I'll better pound that nail straight down into this bearer.
I've got a nail set to drive the head of the nail below the surface. You could also use just another nail. I'm setting the nails at a slight dovetail which when they're both pounded in will make it much harder to pull the top off. And that's not going anywhere. Now, at the moment, the bench is very rigid along its length. No racking at all to be felt. But from side to side, obviously it rocks quite easily. To stabilise the bench, I'm just going to add a foot about 15 inches long out of a piece of 12mm ply. It does become a little bit of a trip hazard, so be a good idea to paint it brightly and just get used to the fact that that's where it is. I'm going to attach it with screws so it can easily be taken off if the bench needs to be stored flat. So in only a couple of hours we've constructed a really solid bench, albeit a slim one, but it's perfectly good to start our woodworking on.